Welcome back to Headlines. It is Tuesday, September 17th. I'm Wes Austin, and these are today's top stories. The Secret Service admitted that they didn't search the golf course before the assassination attempt on former President Trump because the visit was off the record, meaning it was not on his official schedule. And as we all know, assassins strictly follow the official schedule. Ryan Routh set up a sniper's nest on the edge of the course and hid there undetected for nearly 12 hours before Trump arrived. Nobody suspected anything when they kept seeing DoorDash deliveries to the bushes by the sixth hole. Acting Secret Service head Ronald Rowe said that the Secret Service put together a security plan and that the security plan worked. I'm not sure I'd be taking a victory lap. Your security plan hinged on the shooter being an idiot. You caught the guy because he stuck his gun through the fence so that everyone could see it. If this assassin was any dumber, he'd qualify for a cabinet position in the Biden administration. Even a couple of golfers too drunk to drive their golf cart would have noticed a gun barrel sticking out of the fence at them. Hey Bob, I've got the munchies right now and also I think someone's pointing a gun at us. The sniper was at the bottom of this graphic where the red circle is and Trump was at the top where the red dot is. Because the shooter was not a genius and he stuck his barrel out of the chain link fence, the agent saw him when Trump was 300 yards away on the fifth hole. But if this guy wouldn't have been a complete moron and kept his gun hidden, Trump in just a few more minutes would have been at the sixth hole and on the green, he is only 150 feet from the shooter. So the question is, would the agent have caught him if he didn't stick his muzzle out of the fence? When your security plan working depends on the shooter having the IQ of a doorstop, I'm not sure I'd be bragging about it working. I guess the new Secret Service motto is, we stop the threats as long as they're dumber than a bag of hammers. Hillary Clinton suggested people should be charged a crime for spreading misinformation. That's rich coming from someone who made an entire career out of it. But I also think there are Americans who are uh, engaged in uh, this kind of propaganda and whether they should be civilly or even in some cases criminally charged uh, is something that would be a better deterrence because yeah wouldn't it be nice to be able to throw people in jail if they said things you didn't like I mean that would mean we could charge people if they spread things like you know the Russian collusion hoax for example Hillary's fight against misinformation might just be her most ambitious project since trying to delete 30,000 emails. I always feel so enlightened whenever Hillary's on the Rachel Maddow show. The Maddow-Hillary combo is so effective, Pfizer might start bottling it and using it as a natural testosterone blocker. Yesterday on News Nation, Chris Cuomo criticized the media for being so dismissive about the second assassination attempt against former President Donald Trump. The reaction is unacceptable. And it's the second time media and political players have gotten away with playing down what should be a cause for panic. That's why I reached out to Trump. I wanted to just say, listen, I'm really sorry that this is going on and it's being dealt with this way. Even if you don't like or agree, you got to care when somebody tries to kill somebody. I what Cuomo didn't understand is that the story just wasn't newsworthy. The only stories worth printing are where the gun is in the hands of a law-abiding citizen. Chris Cuomo is speaking out about the attempt on Trump's life. It's amazing what a dip in viewership can do to a guy's moral compass. Do you remember the illegal migrant from Venezuela who was an influencer? He went viral on social media for flaunting government handouts and encouraging squatting. Well, he has been ordered to leave the United States. Looks like his How to Mooch Off America TikTok series is getting an unexpected finale. Actually, don't get too excited about this justice being served because it is unclear whether he'll actually be deported. Why? Because Venezuela stopped accepting migrant flights. This situation is like a geopolitical game of hot potato, except nobody wants a potato and the potato is live streaming the whole thing. We can't deport him because Venezuela's border is too tight. Maybe we should ask for advice on how to run a border. They seem to at least know what one is. Venezuela's new slogan, what happens in America stays in America. Thanks for watching Headlines. I'm Wes Austin. Good night.